Hello, this is Spanish 1, Unit 3, Week 1. We'll be looking at vocabulary on pages 72 to 75 of your textbook, plus the student guide exercises. Let's look at what we're talking about for this unit. To start, we have talking about school schedules and subjects. Be able to discuss what students do during the day and ask and tell who is doing an action. And then compare your school with that of a student in a Spanish-speaking country. All right, let's get started. First is your vocabulario en contexto. This is your key vocabulary for this part of the unit. We have el horario de Alicia. Alicia is schedule. Horario is schedule. And in your pacing guide, it talks about taking notes on uh, different uh, words for this unit and putting them into your student guide. And it looks like this. It's right at the beginning of the student guide, your textbook vocabulary. Uh, you could take notes here and as we go. But for Spanish and English, I will explain what the words mean. And um, I'll also have links to the Quizlet vocabulary that has the same words in it. So you can use either one. Okay, so horario is the first word here. Horario is schedule. Obviously, this is a schedule here. So use the context to help you. We have vocabulario in contexto. This is context, right? Horario is their schedule. Uh, notice de Alicia. It is Alicia's schedule. So in Spanish, to uh, describe what something, you know, who it belongs to, uh, you can often use de with a name. You don't use an apostrophe S in Spanish. Okay. So first we have, uh, let's just look at what Alicia says here in her quotes. She says, me gusta mucho mi horario. Now, you'll know from before, me gusta means I like. Right? Me gusta mucho, I like very much. Me gusta mucho mi horario, I really like my schedule. En la primera hora, tengo la clase de tecnología. Es mi clase favorita. Es interesante y práctica, pero a veces es difícil. Okay, so la primera hora you have right here, and this is a schedule. And you can tell by the words here, and and because this appears first in the list. Also because in English you have words like primary and prime and premier. All right, it has to do with the first, right, the number one. So primera hora is first hour, or in English we would say first period. So first period, she has technology class, computer class, tecnología, okay, tecnología. A segunda hora would be second period or second hour, literally, and she has arte. Of course, arte is art. Um, so let's go back to what she says here. En la primera hora tengo la clase de tecnología, and then she describes her class. Es mi clase favorita. Okay, and you could tell what favorita means, right? It means favorite. Uh, notice that it's feminine. Favorita. Why? Because the word clase, tengo la clase, the word clase, class, is feminine in Spanish. So she's using an adjective here to describe the class, the favorite one. So la clase favorita. Es interesante y práctica. It is interesting. Notice the word interesante. It ends in an E, just like inteligente or paciente, impaciente. There's no change with masculine and feminine. Y práctica. Práctica, practical. All right? So, práctica. Pero a veces es difícil. You know, a veces from before, sometimes it is difficult. It's a hard class sometimes. Okay. Um, let's go down the list here. We have segunda hora, arte. Tercera hora, that's third. In English, we have the word tertiary. That means third. Ciencias sociales. So that's social sciences, social studies. Cuarta hora. Cuarta hora. Now, it's not cuatro, but it's cuarta, the fourth hour. So this is first, second, third, fourth, right? This is how you say those, uh, what we call ordinal numbers. Ciencias naturales as natural science. Natural sciences. Uh, ciencias in Spanish is plural if it's science in general. Quinta hora is uh, fifth period. She has al almuerzo, lunch. 
Then we move on to the rest of the schedule. Sexta hora, sixth period, español. So she has Spanish. Septima hora, seventh period, matemáticas, as math. Octava hora, octava hora is eighth period, inglés. And the last one is novena hora, educación física, ninth period. Down here under más vocabulario, we have, let's see if I can show that here, we have the word decimo, which means tenth, decimo. Now we see Alicia talking about her classes, a little more information, assignments, and the supplies that she has. She says, Tengo mucha tarea en la clase de inglés. Uh, you can see her schedule here for inglés, right? On Thursdays, she has English. This is what she has to read. She has activities, and she has to write two stories. So it's a pretty busy schedule there. It's a lot to do. Mucha tarea. What are the things you have to do for a class? It's called homework. Mucha tarea. Notice the word mucha here. It's also feminine to go with tarea. So in English class, I have a lot of homework. She says, Estudio mucho en la clase español. Para mí, la clase español es más interesante que la clase, que la clase de matemáticas. So, I study. So this is the word for I study. Estudio. You know estudiar. So, estudio must mean I study. Estudio mucho en la clase español. I study very much in Spanish class. Para mí, la clase español es más interesante que la clase de matemáticas. For me, Spanish class is more interesting than math class. So she's making a comparison. Más que. Más with the adjective and then que. More interesting than. And over here she says, para la clase de matemáticas necesito una calculadora y una carpeta de argollas. So for uh, math class, I need, necesito, and there's that O ending, just like estudio, right? I need a calculator, una calculadora y una carpeta de argollas. Uh, carpeta de argollas, as you can see in the picture, it's a three-ring binder. She has a calculator and her binder. Para la clase de español necesito un diccionario. So I need a dictionary for Spanish class, and it's right here. Para la clase de español necesito. So again, you have necesito, necesito. So it's talking about what is needed in different classes, what, what uh, uh, materials are needed. Okay, now we have to complete 2A1 in your student guide. So look at that for unit 3. La cl las clases. Classes. Write the name of the item below in the school subject for which you might use it in the appropriate column below. There's some flexibility in this, so write something that's logical. So, under que es, we have this book that's called Español. So it's obviously El Libro de Español. I'll put that in there. And then put it there. Good. And then para que, que clase, obviously the class is going to be Español. So we just put that in there. It's pretty straightforward. It goes to goes off your vocabulary from the from the textbook. Um, this number two is a calculator. So you could put la calculadora, and I'm I'm using the article here just to um, reinforce the gender of the noun. Okay, in Spanish, every noun has a gender. Okay, it's either masculine or feminine every noun. So we have to keep that in mind when we talk about things, right? So if you want to say a calculator, you have to know is it masculine or feminine. And the calculadora, because it ends in an A, it's a reasonable assumption that it's feminine, and it, and it is. Una calculadora would be a calculator. Una buena calculadora is a good calculator. Now, para que clase? You can have, you can do, do use the calculators for different kind of classes, right? Now I'm going to put las matemáticas because it's it's probably looking for that answer and it would be more natural to say. But of course you could put las ciencias in there. It could be in the science class as well or any kind of, of class 
but it's uh, probably more logical to be in a math class. Now, number three is uh, we have English literature on there, right? So we could put uh, libro, el libro de inglés, right? English book, right? Or el libro de literatura, right? Literature. And then, para qué clase? Obviously, it's going to be English class. La clase de inglés. And then, so on and so forth, right? We have computer, which is computadora. And the clase would be tecnología, right? So we just use your vocabulary. Diccionario, that's, that's just the answer. Diccionario, put diccionario there. ¿Qué clase? Clase español. We're going to put Spanish there again. Social studies. Libro, uh, well, it looks like, it doesn't look like a folder. Right? Una carpeta de argollas, right? This looks like a three-ring binder. And the class is going to be Estudios Sociales, Social Studies. See, it's not a textbook. It's a binder, isn't it? So, Carpeta de Argollas, Estudios Sociales would be number six. Now, on Scramble the Letters, I'll let you do this on your own. This is Clase de, and it would be like Inglés, right? You're going to put Inglés there in the blank. All you have to do is unscramble. This is from the vocabulary, so I'll let you do that on your own. On to day two, we're going to do textbook pages 76 to 77, your student guide uh, 2A2, and then textbook exercise number three on page 77. El primer día de clases. Of course, you know from la primera hora, first period, el primer día means the first day. So the first day of school. The first day of school. Es el primer día de inglés de la escuela bilingüe en la Ciudad de México. So it's the first day of class in the bilingual school in, the, in Mexico City. Now we have some characters here. Señorita Santoro, seems like a teacher. Teresa, Claudia, Señor Trevino, looks like possibly another teacher. Claudia says, Teresa, ¿qué clase tienes en la primera hora? Right? What class do you have in first period? Teresa responds, Tengo la clase de inglés. I have English class. And number five, it says, Teresa says, necesitas hablar con el señor Treviño en la oficina. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the wrong thing. We need number two, don't we? Here we are. So, Claudia says, uh, ¿Quién enseña la clase de inglés? Right? Teresa just told her she has her hey, she has English class. And uh, so, Claudia wants to know who teaches. ¿Quién enseña la clase de inglés? ¿Quién enseña? Who teaches? Right? She's thinking about it. You can see the teacher in the background. Who's teaching? Teresa says, el señor Marín. All right, Mr. Marín es un profesor muy divertido. He's a very fun teacher. ¿Y tú? What about you? ¿Qué clase tienes en la primera hora? What class do you have first period? And so Claudia now has to respond, tengo clase de matemáticas. I have math class. Me gusta mucho. I like it a lot. Para mí es muy fácil. ¿Y qué tienes en la segunda hora? So for me, it's very easy. So our math class is very easy. She likes it. So we have the words fácil and difícil, right? Difficult and easy. Fácil is easy. ¿Qué tienes en la segunda hora? What do you have second period? And Teresa responds, la clase de educación física. Um, I have PE, yeah? physical education class. Número cuatro. Teresa said, en la segunda hora, ¿qué clases tienes, Claudia? And so she's turning the question around and said, what do you have, second period? And Claudia says, a ver, let's see. En la segunda hora, tengo la clase de matemáticas y también tengo la clase de matemáticas en la tercera, en la cuarta, en la quinta, en la sexta hora. All right? I have, so it's a, it's a problem, right? I have... Math class, second period. Okay. She just said that her first period was math. Now she's saying her second period is math. And I also have math class, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth period. Now we can go back to number five. And it says, Teresa is saying, explaining, Necesitas hablar con el señor Trevino en la oficina. 
you need to talk to Mr. Trevino in the office. Okay, because she's saying, well, it must be a mistake. And Claudia says, buena idea. Right? Good idea. Numero seis, number six. Claudia says, buenos dias, señor Trevino. So she is greeting, it looks like a counselor, possibly, or a principal. Necesito hablar con usted. I need to talk to you. Tengo la clase de matemáticas. Uh, Señor Trevino says, Sí, sí, Claudia, pero ahora no es posible. Mañana. Okay, so it seems like Señor Trevino is very uh, busy. He says, uh, now it's not possible uh, tomorrow. He just says tomorrow. Mañana. Mañana. Número siete. Señorita Santoro. All right, Miss Santoro. Uh, señor, and you also see the abbreviations for each one. So, Señor is abbreviated SR, and Señorita is abbreviated SRTA. That means Miss, okay, an unmarried woman. Miss Santoro. Señorita Santoro. Buenos días, estudiantes. Okay, she's addressing the class here. Las matemáticas son muy interesantes y prácticas, ¿verdad? Uh, math is very interesting and practical, right? You'll notice that um, math is plural in Spanish. And it's just that way. So you would say, las matemáticas son muy interesantes y prácticas. And in English, though, we would just make it singular. And the estudiantes say, sí, profesora. Uh, yes, teacher. Uh, señorita Santoro says, y es muy importante estudiar y trabajar mucho. It's very important to uh, study and work a lot. Okay, so you can see that um, Claudia here is not having a very good time with this. Number eight, Señorita Santoro says, Claudia. And Claudia says, Tengo seis clases de matemáticas hoy. Señorita Santoro dice, Seis. Es aburrido, ¿no? So she's saying it's a, it's six, six. You have six. It's it's a drag, isn't it? Es aburrido, ¿no? It's boring, isn't it? Now to finish up with day two, we do uh, two a two in your student guide. El horario, of course, is schedule, right? You've just received your class schedule using the model as a guide. Write sentences to describe which classes you have and when you have them. Okay. So you have hora, right? And you have the numbers here. And uh, you're going to use la primera, segunda. Okay? Use a vocabulary in your book that you just went over at the beginning of this video to describe when the classes take place and the, what the classes are. Inglés, English, matemáticas, math, arte, art, ciencias sociales, social studies, al almuerzo, lunch, tecnología, computers, or technology. Español, Spanish, Educación Física, PE, Physical Education, Ciencias Naturales, Natural Sciences. So, all you're going to do is follow the model here. Modelo, tengo la clase de inglés en la primera hora. You can do this in order if you like. So, we're going to go for a uh, second period. And type it in here. What do we have? Second period. It looks like math. Tengo la clase de. It's going to be la clase de for everything. La clase de matemáticas. N. And then you need second period. La segunda hora. And that's that's how you do it. And you just go down the list if you want uh, to do an order. You don't have to do them in order, just as long as you get them all. Use the vocabulary there on page 74 to get all the periods right here. You can see them all right here, what the periods are called. First period, second period. In Spanish, you use hora, not periodo. All right? Hora three. Como son las clases? What are the classes like? Your friend Marcos is curious about which classes you like and which ones you don't like. Answer his questions using adjectives you've learned in this chapter. Follow the model. So, Modelo says, Te gusta la clase de matemáticas? And the answer is, Si sí, es interesante. It's interesting. So, you can look at those 
um, that vocabulary we were just looking at a minute ago. It's right here. So use that to help you. So this is a very open-ended, you know, not really many wrong answers, right? Número dos, ¿te gusta la clase de español? Do you like Spanish class? Sí, and then give a positive, you know, description. Sí, es divertida. Sí, es interesante. ¿Te gusta la clase de tecnología? Do you like computer class? Sí, es práctica, maybe. It's practical, right? Practical means it helps you in daily life or it help you in the future, right? ¿Te gusta la clase de matemáticas? Do you like math class? And let's say you say no. So what would you say? No es difícil. Es muy difícil. Maybe you say, well, no, it's hard. No es aburrida. No, it's boring. You know, um, there's a lot of different things you can say here, right? So it's, it's very open-ended. ¿Te gusta la clase de ciencias sociales? Sí. Okay, so then give a positive adjective for this, right? Sí es fácil. Es interesante. Es divertida. And so on and so forth. So when you see C, write S and then give an adjective that's positive. You see no, you could use S in an adjective that's not positive. Or you can say no es divertida, no es interesante. You know, you can say those kinds of things. So, um, but if you're going to say no, uh, repeat the no, no, you know, because you're answering no, I don't like it. And then you're going to give a reason. So if your reason says no, then you want to put no twice, right? No, no es interesante. No, it's not interesting. Okay, so make sure you repeat the no if your answer is a negative uh, with with that too, with your description, your reason why. If your reason why is a negative, uh, write another no there with it because this no only answers the question if you like it and then you're describing the class as not fun or not boring or something like that. 2A4, we would just talk about what you have. ¿Tienes la tarea? Do you have your homework? Si, sí, tengo la tarea. You're just going to go from tienes to tengo. This might be later in your in your uh, pacing guide, though. So we might skip that for now. So let's go ahead and go to 2A5 and maybe go back to it. How would you talk about the following people? Remember, you're talking about them, right? Their correct subject pronoun next to their names. So Marisol would be ella because you would say uh, she, right? When you talk about her. Pablo, talking about him, you would use el, he, right? So we just put that in. El. Maria Esther. That's two girls. Two girls are two women. So you would say ellas. Marta y yo. Marta and I. Depends. If you're a guy, you will say nosotros. But if you're female, you would say nosotras. Okay? Because Marta's a girl. So you could have an all-female group there. Nosotras. But if you're a boy, use nosotros. Tú y Marisol, that would be ustedes, right? You all, ustedes. Now, I'm not going to worry about vosotros or vosotras right now. That's just in Spain. So I'm just going to stick with ustedes from now on for the plural, you. Now, Dr. Smith, it would be él, right? Because you're talking about him. So you want to use... El. Okay, and so on and so forth. Number six would be ellos. Carmen is a girl's name. Ella. Alicia Roberto would be ellos. Masculine plural. Alicia Roberto. Rolando y Elena, same thing. Ellos. B, how would you talk to the following people? Write the correct subject pronoun. There's only three options there. You're going to use tú or usted abbreviated UD, are going to use ustedes. Those are the only options you have available. All right, so pick from these three to do these. So number one, Prof Professor Santiago, how would you talk to him? Mr. Santiago, obviously you're going to use usted. You're going to use the second one. Okay, Marta y Carmen, how are you going to talk to both of those girls? You're going to use ustedes, the last one. 
Anita y yo, número tres. Um, so Anita y yo, Anita and I. Um, well, you, maybe we'll put nosotros in there, right? If it's going to be us and talking, talking, talking about us, maybe. So I'm going to use nosotros or nosotras. Tu amigo Federico. How do you talk to your your friend Federico? Or, yeah, your friend Federico is going to be tú, right? Tú, you. La señorita Ibanez is going to be usted. Ricardo, tú, right? Ricardo, first name, tú. La profesora Álvarez, as a teacher, you're going to use usted. Okay, that's going to be all for right now. I will uh, finish up week one for Spanish one in the next video. Gracias.